us to review the results as published by IMEC from Asia and West all the way to Oredo local government area is a man himself who has been in the capacity of election observation from the People's Reporter. We're now joined by Honorable Desmond Olariwaju Fowobi, who joins us virtually from the nation's capital, Abuja. Hello, Honorable Desmond. Good morning to you. Can you hear us? Uh, good morning, Dito. Uh, it's good to be with you virtually this morning. Now, very quickly, let, let's get your thoughts and let's start from the part of a peacefully conducted polls. A lot of commendation we're seeing across the major headlines this morning going to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and uh, with the declaration of a governor-elect. How would you rate the conduct of the Edo gover uh, governorship polls? Um, you know, like I always say, and I've always maintained, that our election umpire, INEC, see have a long way to go. And uh, we'll get to that time where we can describe our elections to be credible, to be fair, and to be just to all concerns when the Nigerian people, especially those who have been employed, invited to be part of the process, the police, the ad hoc staff, the commissioners, and everybody involved, including the party agents, have decided that they are going to make our election. But until that time, We'll keep working it. We'll keep because we cannot describe the election in Edo State to be perfect or to be the best. It's still work in progress. I, if you were part of the elections yesterday, there are quite a lot of complaints here and there. Election may not have been violent. It may not have been orchestrated or marred with a couple of. Uh, pocket of violence here and there. But that is not to say that the election is the best. There are people who complained of lack of materials even as at 11 a.m. As at 10.30 a.m. in some units and all that, there, are, there were a series of complaints of late arrival of electoral, uh, electoral materials. So for me, the people because sometimes it might not be completely an INEC fault. Sometimes it could be the party agents, it could be logistic problems, it could be police, it could be security to guarantee the safety of these staffs that will be conducting the elections. So, but the Nigerian people in total, we need to understand that, for me, I do not know why our elections cannot be the best. INEC have over four good years to plan a new election. But still, we couldn't get the best from this election. I could not, I can't really relate this problem to one thing or the other. Here, yeah, elections have come and gone in Edo State. I know that there are going to be some people who are going to walk into the court gate, into the courtroom to seek redress or dissatisfaction over the results. But so far, so good. Uh, Monday, uh, Senator Monday of the APC, and depending when we have statement from the PDP, maybe seeking redress in court, uh, election has come and gone in those states, and the uh, APC candidate has been declared winner. But the election, we thank God that there was no record of killings here and there and pockets of violence everywhere. But that is not to say that there were no some instances of violence, but so far so good, it is a work in progress. But I hope maybe in the next year, the next time that we're going to be having an election of this nation in Ondo, it should be what it should be somewhat better than this. Well, well, Honorable Desmond, let's talk about the uh Labour Party candidate uh Olumide Akpata, uh, who won by a margin of just four percent in the uh election, and just as much as his principal. Uh, the Labour Party presidential candidate in the just-concluded elections, uh, Peter Obi, 
won by a similar margin in the presidential elections. Many people, you know, asserted that perhaps he's just a disruptor in the uh, bigger scheme of, thing, of things in the election. And now Lumide Akpata or just sliding by with 4% of votes in the total number of votes casted. Do you think that perhaps the Labour Party has been relegated to just a disruption uh, kind of agent or party in the elections that are holding in Nigeria? Well, you can't say that uh, uh, Shijuke. Um, it is it would be fair to the Labour Party and its supporters that at least among all the political parties we have in the country, they are finding their way into the political landscape and they are part of the a fundamental statement in our electoral uh, system. The Labour Party presence is actually disrupting status quo. Before now, elections have always been between the ruling party and the opposition party. And for so many years, for 24 years, have been between AP, PDP, PDP being the, the ruling party for 16 years, and ACN and some other parties. Then, with the amalgamation of ACN, CPC, and uh, AMPP, so we now have PDP and APC that have been in our electoral space for many years. But with the coming of the Labour Party, it's now giving some young Nigerians the opportunity to participate in the election process. Now, what you're seeing, the 4% you're seeing are the people who have not been voter they have not been irregular voters and that is to tell you about that is to tell you more about the nigerian society that you uh, you are seeing that nigerians are conserv the people who vote in nigeria are conservative people the nigerians who vote in nigeria they are either member of apc and pdp the four percent you are seeing from nowhere, they are the new people or the new order of the day, people who have been introduced into the election system. And uh, this is to tell you that the Labour Party still have a huge task to do in terms of civic engagement and mobilization of the Nigerian people. You could remember some few weeks, weeks ago, election was conducted on the internet. Online election was conducted by different platforms in respect to Edo election. And surprisingly, interestingly to, to everyone, won the elections. And that is to tell you that the people who believe in the ideology of the Labour Party, but they are not the regular voters. They are the new people. They are the Gen Zs. They are on the internet. So. Labour Party needs to convert these virtual followers to physical followers, to off, off, offline followers. This is a good thing. The fact that Labour Party is there is a good thing. So the Labour Party needs to capitalize on its strengths and see how it can make some huge investment, huge commitments in mobilizing Nigerians from the virtual world into the real world and emphasize on the importance of not just registering our voices, our supports on the social media, but we need to come out of the social media to save this country physically. But I'm not saying that uh, the Labour Party are uh, just, but a lot of people who supported this party are the young people. And that is to tell you that we have a long, a serious problem in Nigeria. A country with a population, youth population, standing tall, 70% of the country's total population make up of young people. You find out that these young people are not interested, so to say, in understanding the democratic process and, on, and getting actively involved in elections and politics. Well, Honorable, so, Honorable Desmond, you, you mentioned that uh, the Labour Party are quite strong online. 
Does this confirm the assertions of many Nigerians, especially supporters of the APC and PDP, that perhaps Labour Party is only an online, uh, you know, political party and doesn't necessarily have strong ground rooting in grassroots politics? Yes, that's true. That is a that's a fantastic assertion, and it is very, the prediction is very correct. They are very strong because of if you look at the demographics of most of the people who supported this party, who have been following this party, they are majorly young people who are recently involved themselves in political and leadership issues because of some of the trends on the internet. They are not the original voters. Let me tell you, this country is a very funny country. There are a set of people who vote in Nigeria. Most of our educated people, most of the educated Nigerians, most of these young people you see, they don't even have voter card. Some of them who have voter card, they do not have the interest in leaving their comfort to election polling units to, 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 to cast their votes. It will interest you to know that you see those motto path, uh, those who work at the motor parts, so, to call, so we call them the good boys, the young girls, the market women, and some of these jobless artisans that roam around the streets. They are the people who vote. They are the people who vote. They are the people who are involved in the electoral process. You see these educated young Nigerians, all the people shouting on the social media, those people complaining, lamenting, they don't even understand that they need to come out of their shell and be actively involved in electoral process. So the assertion is true that the Labour Party, and that is a fact, they do not have strong base outside the internet. So the party officials and the good Nigerians need to mobilize more young people to come out of the social media, to come out of the virtual world, into the real world, and be part of the leadership selection in the country. Now let's come to the PDP, and that's the second issue in the news. Before you joined in, we, take, we took a listen to Governor Gobino Basik's press release following the results as released by INEC. The PDP is uh, quite disgruntled with the results in three local government area, and uh, they're calling for a review of uh, the results as published by INEC. Does this set a precedence of uh, election petition tribunals that might be coming in the coming weeks, in your in your perspective, or what does this do for the opposition uh, in Edo State? Definitely, Beto, you would expect that you, the ruling party and uh, uh, the PDP went into this election with strong belief and optimistic that they are going to win this election. So the surprise is a shock. This result is a surprise and a shock to not just the candidates, but also the party officials. But then, that tells you more about the role that internal conflict can cause to a party. You know, there are so many things that people underestimate that could injure, that can cause strong or major injury to outcome of results. Like the current crisis of leadership in PDP has contributed. Like I told you earlier, there are only few people that vote in this country. And most of them, sorry to say this, you have to pay them for their service. And these people who decide who governs us in this country, some of them are not learned. Some of them can be, their, their sense of reasoning can be persuaded or judged. Their judge, sense of judgment can be persuaded with just little amount of money. And those are the people who make the decision for us in this country. And you see about five APC governors were present in Edo State. You know what that means? It means that naturally they will be getting boys. They will be getting those boys, settle those boys, pay those boys to do extra work to, 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 to vote for the election. If PDP got, uh, leadership have put their house in order before now, mobilized governors, senators down to Edo states, 
And then they will do the bidding also of buying voters, because this is vote buying. They buy voters to vote for them, and they will be able to close that gaps. Naturally, you will expect that there will be disgruntling, there will be complaints, and there will even be steps or moves to approach the tribunal. So in the, in the next few days, expect that from the PDP. Well, well, Honorable Desmond, do you see any light at the end of the tunnel for the People's Democratic Party, considering the statement from the president, Asiwajo Ahmed Tinubu, uh, asking disgruntled uh, PDP supporters to go to court if they are not satisfied with the outcomes of their uh, elections in Edo? Your guess is as good as mine, uh, Shiji uh, I want to tell you that... Uh, it is good, you know, the court is the last hope of the common man. But in this case, the PDP, they are not common man. They are one of the strong men of the country. So we expect that they will go into the court to seek redress. But then, whether they are, uh, they are complaints or prayers will be answered or given hearing or their prayers will be granted by the court, by the appeal court. It all depends on the basis or the strong evidence, substantial evidence they will be coming to, substantive evidence they will be coming to the court with. So if they have a strong case, fine. The court is expected to be fair in its uh, dealings and judgments. So it is not something I can sit here in my comfort room and tell you that they would... Yes, the court will be fair to listen to the PDP complaint. But whether the court will grant their prayers, it all going to depend on the quality of evidence and strong case they are going to be making in court. So I don't know what will be the outcome, but what I know is that the court will be willing to listen to their complaint. Now, let's move on to the third item in the news this morning on how many look at it from the angle of federal might. Edo State has now been returned to the center. The APC has emerged with uh, the governor-elect position, and President Bola Metinibu is particularly congratulating the electoral umpire, INEC, for a peaceful conduct of the poll, but more so in terms of the party dynamics and the influence of the APC now in Edo State. How much of a symbolic outcome is this? Well, let me tell you, what has happened in Edo State tells you more about um, sense of direction uh, uh, around political leaders. You see, APC won this election. It's not on a platter of gold. APC worked for this. I tell you, APC worked hard to get this victory. It's not just about the number of governors that were deployed. There are a lot of people, there are a lot of agencies, there are a lot of head of agencies. There are some, a lot of politicians who have been, in, who have been part of this government, who have been appointed in one way or the other, that have been given the mandate to go to a state and deliver that state by presidency. I was in some offices last week I wouldn't want to mention names because camera did not capture their presence in those states. But these are head of agencies, head of the assassins that have been given the charge to go back to Edo State and deliver that state. And you can see those who face the camera. You see some governors that came out, you know, to support the APC candidates Monday. See, one thing you need to understand is that the current crisis of hegemony, leadership, between Wiki and some party members have been responsible for the loss of PDP. PDP needs to find solution to their problem with the suspension of Wiki because this is causing them a lot of distractions in the state. You cannot be sitting on a gunpowder and expect to have peace. PDP is having internal crisis. Even you will expect that APC will win this election. If you looked at some of the indicators and some of the factors before this election, like look at how 
the whole thing started. When Shwaibu, Philip Shwaibu, the deputy governor to Obaseki, made his intention known to the governor that he was going to contest for governor. And then there were some dramas that greeted the states that led to the impeachment of deputy governor Philip Shwaibu. Even when it was reinstated by the court, the governor of the state refused to honor that judgment. Apart from that, Philip Tribal is a strong force in the in the state. Obas, uh, don't forget that Obaseki and Philip Tribal, they were formerly members of the APC. So this dynamics is expected. What you saw or what we see in just concluded election yesterday, there are a lot of things that has happened in the recent weeks before the election that has shown strong indicator that the APC will eventually win the election. One, from internal crisis within the PDP, and PDP losing its strength every day. And some of the some of the propaganda that happened couldn't save the PDP. Uh, the governor is not well read. The governor, it's not, election is beyond that. Nigeria has not gotten to the level where people think critically about their choices of leadership. What plays out in election in Nigeria right now is about understanding the terrain and mobilizing all solutions, all effort to ensure that you find solutions to those, to those dynamics and indicators. And that was what the APC have done, considering the federal might have played out, the defection of some members, Shwaibu leaving the party, PDP, to support APC has also contributed and having strong member of Ashwadu team going to Edo State to deliver the governor also has played a major role. So it is expected victory, Bito. Well, well, well Honorable Desmond, uh, you spoke about the internal crisis rocking the PDP, and we saw that it seems like the only top uh, dog in the People's Democratic Party that was outrightly supporting uh, the PDP candidate in the Edo polls was the governor of Adamawa State, uh, Governor Amadou Omaru Fintri, uh, who has been quite vocal about the election results alongside Governor Godwin Obaseke as well. And uh, we were expecting to have seen the FCT minister yes, on Wiki there to show his uh, solidarity and support with the PDP candidate, but that didn't happen. And other PDP stalwarts as well did not show up to uh, rescue or deliver their mandate uh, to the people of Edo State and the PDP. I was equally expecting to see the minister of FCT, uh, Barrister Nyeso Nwike, with his strong holds, interest in holding the political structure, strong political, wearing strong political influence, and being an influential party member. His presence, if Wiki had traveled to Edo State, his presence alone would have to Edo State, his presence in the state alone, being the minister of FCT and being one of the strong supporters of PDP, his presence in Wiki would have helped not just to mobilize himself, he would have went ahead to mobilize some other strong governors in the South South, being one of the leaders of PDP in the entire South. And Southern part of Nigeria is where you have more numbers of PDP, you know, South South, precisely, where you have more number of PDP governor. So if the leader, the so-called so leader, you understand, who has been wrestling to get the leadership of the PDP, had made himself available in those states, it would have helped to salvage the situation. Because it's all about buying and selling. And you know, the Honorable Minister is very, very popular when it comes to influencing uh, uh, voters. You know, he has that magic, uh, reverse magic. He would have done some magic in Edo State, who, which would have given uh, the Edo State uh, PDP candidates some level of uh, soft landing and maybe victory. But it's half sense in a dosage has caused major injury to, to to the party. Well, in less than a quarter of, a, uh, of an hour to go, let's look at some of the prominent issues in the news away from the endo politics. 
It's on the position of the supply chain with uh, regards to PMS. Early reported on the Vanguard newspaper this morning, the Lagos state government and Dangote refinery are in a bit of disagreement over parts and uh, the call-up system for loading of trucks. Lagos has over time been a predominantly driven economy owing to tax generation and with the largest single train refinery over 650,000 barrels capacity per day situated in Ibejuleki. It's also of a concern on how best Dangote can benefit from the Lagos state government to make the loading of these trucks more easy and the onward delivery of refined PMS to other parts of the country even more affordable for Nigerians. Does this news come as a surprise to you? What would you prefer to prefer to the Lagos state government and Dangote refinery in terms of managing this very fragile relationship? Uh, there will be more issues in future. Like I told you, our governance system or leadership response system has been reactionary and not proactive. If you look at the Dangote refinery, where it's seated, it's seated in Lekki Free Trade Zone. Uh, Lekki Free Trade Zone is located at Ibeju Lekki Assis. And that Assis is uh, shared boundaries with um, Aja Assis and the uh, Ekpe to the exit of Lagos. So, to that, look at the roads that connect Ibeju, Ijebode, Ekpe, and Lekki. It's a very tiny road. Thank God to the intervention of uh, former governor of Lagos State, Akiomi Ambode, who did a little bit of expansion to that road. You are going to have more crisis in loading of this PMS. Supply of PMS, not because of its availability, but flow of inflow of these trucks from Lagos to Lekki to Aja, from Aja, outside Lagos, is going to be a more it's going to be more confusing. It's going to be more crisis if we do not put in place a permanent solutions. Like I heard that they are planning to have a deep, a, a deep sea port at Lekki there that will make the government move or help Dangote in moving some of these PMS outside to some other farm towns or to some other places like Tinkan Island and all that. So, but the best approach would be expansion of the road to make to, to, to dualize the road at least proper lanes as well as have a thinking of having connecting the railway the railway at the Jibo in mainland a Butemeta how you can connect the train that can start carrying cargoes that can start carrying some of these petrol products from that Lagos assets so that we can have similar supply of this PMS to other states of the country. In future, by the time these Dangote refineries will be working at full capacity, I tell you, it's going to be a nightmare in that assets. Consider the current level of uh, challenges in trying to get into Lekki, either from Lagos, from Ekwe assets, or from uh, Ikoi, or VI, or from Third Mainland, which is going to be a very big deal, or from Ikorodu. And you know that the Ikorodu road is also very bad at the moment. Aging road, Ikorodu road is very, very bad at the moment. So government needs to look for more creative way with Dangote to see that they do not make life very hard to the people living in that assets because of gridlock and because of the pressure that P uh, these tank petrol tankers will be putting on that assets, as well as supplying of these materials to those who need it across the other 36 states of the country. So the federal government, the state government, and Dangote refineries, they need to have a, a closer look and of a better option, either to uh, consider using the, the seaport or use the train, connect the train, or expanding the road. The, the government needs to look for more creative ways to solve that problem. Well, well, well Honorable Desmond, um, I, I like how you highlighted either the use of the uh, deep seaports 
or the use of trains in transporting uh, this uh, petroleum product, which isn't really an option that uh, the Nigerian government and the energy sector has considered in, in quite some time now. But Dangote Refinery seems to have been facing a lot of bottlenecks since uh, its inception. Do you think that perhaps maybe a more viable solution will be this train option that you mentioned? And how soon do you think, if implemented, uh, can Dangote Refinery uh, start using trains in order to export petroleum products to other parts of the country? It's all about interest by the federal government and the state government. You see, our system, our governments, always devote so much energy in politics, politicking for the interest of very few people and not considering the poor masses, the large number of the Nigerian populace. That has always been our challenge. Most of our policies in many years before now has not been people-oriented, people-centric. They have been for the interest of only few rich people. We see that government of Nigeria has always prioritized the capitals. They have always capital, uh, prioritized the rich places, the the highlight places of the country, neglecting development in the rural area. And that is why the government has not thought ahead ever since this project started, whether in 2020 or 2022, so to say, or 2018. The federal government, the state government, are supposed to have been working collaboratively to, to provide this solution because there is no quick fix to connecting lucky assets with the Jibo uh, railway. It is not going to be very easy. And don't forget that the train, the light train and the blue rail facility that is in place in Lagos State is not connected to Jibo. The red line is not connected. It has not been connected to Aja Assis. That it can easily be connected to Dangote refineries. So it's still going to be a long time solution. So the quick solution that the government can look at right now is the deep, is the deep sea, because the lake asset where Dangote is, is sitting close to the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, which if federal government made some appreciable amount of investment, it can easily activate the this policy and the road, the road too cannot, is not something you can solve within few few months. The only option right now is to activate the deep sea, uh, the deep sea ports at that lake. And that is the easiest way right now to solve this solution. Why we look for the long time solution, which is what? Connecting the railway. Now, many would have expected that the Lagos state government would have borrowed a queue from the situation at the Apapa Wharf and the traffic congestion that has greeted that, especially with the coming on board of the light train and the blue rain projects in Lagos State for human movements, there seems to be no dedicated cargo rail line project in Lagos as it were, as an alternative route for some of this heavy cargo to include uh, PMS and all that. Don't you think that the Lagos State government under the leadership of our Governor Babajide Sonwolu should be taking this as a priority into the situations of road infrastructure across the state? Definitely, that will be the next line of thought for the Lagos State government. I told you, it is a general problem in Nigeria that leadership or governance in Nigeria does not think ahead. And that is what kept us where we are today or put us in the mess that we are. Government don't think. It's so painful that our government don't think ahead. Rather, government always reacts to some of the social challenges. So the reactions i know the reaction that we follow some of the good luck you're going to be experiencing and that lucky assist as a result of the pressure that uh you're going to be having from the tanker trailers would definitely cause lagos state to start thinking i'm very sure when it is response lagos state responds very well you know it is the mega city one of the richest states in sub-saharan africa so you will expect that definitely Lagos State will respond positively in considering activating the cargo railway. So in the next few months, years, as a response to this challenge, just look out and watch out 
for the cargo railway. I know Lagos State will think of that, but just that they have not thought of it before now because government in Nigeria, government style in Nigeria is that they wait for problems, they wait until when something is a crisis before they look at or think of providing solution to them. So in the next few months or weeks, we we'll see that Lagos State government will consider a long time solution to this problem because our papa has been a nightmare for many years that that particular road was shut down and you cannot afford to shut down a pair aja lucky expressway it's not going to work so the best thing to do now is to activate the cargo railway and the deep this seaport well, we must thank you, Honorable Desmond Fowobi, for taking our time to join us this morning to review certain headlines in the news. We do appreciate you. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be with you.